Hi, my name is John Parker and welcome to the BNSF Fall River Division. This model railroad is a prototype freelance representation of the BNSF modern era between 2016 and 2022. And it represents cities, scenes, uh, lifestyle, and railroad that can be seen during that time frame. My passion in the hobby is model railroad operations. So it was designed and built for operations. Uh, we try to operate monthly with a crew of between 18 and 22 people. And um, that's my real passion in the hobby is to get people together to have fun and operate on the model railroad. I also like to introduce new people into operations. So I always ensure that uh, we've got new people attending and we can accommodate and help new operators throughout the process. So welcome and uh, enjoy the video. The model railroad was designed and constructed using a um, mushroom layout design concept. And the mushroom is a multi-level layout where there are two levels, but only one level is visible at a time. So this is the lower level, and there's a second level that's up above the lower level, and it's accessible by a raised floor, and it's visible from the other side. So the design initially was done on a CAD system. It's pretty difficult to conceptualize and visualize the mushroom concept, but it was designed on a CAD system. And once the plan was finished, I had it reviewed by a lot of folks, received a lot of different feedback in terms of what changes should be made. And once we settled on a final plan, we took the CAD design and laid it out on the basement floor with masking tape just to make sure it fit. And surprisingly, uh, we had about a foot or two on either direction, so it fit perfectly. We were very satisfied with the overall plan. And then we started construction. So fortunately, I've had a group of five or six friends that uh, participated during the first year or two or three of construction. And we had uh, weekly, sometimes twice a week work sessions. And uh, construction started very quickly, the bench work, and the foundation was uh, completed very quickly. Welcome to the traffic center. This is where all of the trains start and terminate. We call it the traffic center. Traditionally, it's called the... Um, Staging area, I like to refer to as active staging, where we have two operators that work back here. One that actually manages the crews, monitors the CTC system, and generates manifests and switch lists on JMRI operations. And what happens back here is that the crews put together the trains, and they send them out to the layout at crew change points where the operators pick them up. So operators do not take trains in and out of the traffic center. And switch lists and manifests are generated on uh, JMRI operations. We run this in real time, meaning that during the session, we generate uh, the manifests and switch lists. Um, they build the train from those manifests and switch lists. They send them out to the crew change point. And then we call the operator from the crew lounge to report to the crew change point to pick up their train. So the traffic manager who's in charge back here um, is responsible for calling the crews and they also generate the manifests and they monitor the CTC system to help them understand where the trains are at and when crews might become available. And it helps them overall um, manage the session. This is probably one of the most critical jobs on the railroad in terms of keeping people busy and managing the traffic flow over the entire division. The traffic manager is in constant communication with the dispatcher through a phone intercom system. Typically before the dispatcher will um, send a train into a crew change point, they'll contact the traffic manager and ensure that they're, the track's available and, um, and vice versa. The, the traffic manager will contact the dispatcher to make sure that you know they, they're aware that train's ready and a crew's gonna become available. And once the crew gets on board, they contact the dispatcher over a two-way radio and let the dispatcher know they're ready to depart and then they'll give them a signal when they're ready. So when the traffic center sends a train out to a crew change point, there are some hidden trackage areas, but the train always stops at a crew change point. And this is what we see on the video cameras. 
This is the yard. So if a train is being brought out to the yard, for example, on the UP, they stop it short of the signals, which are identified by these red dots. And then they stop the train and they call the dispatcher. So all of the crew change points are, are viewable on uh, cameras, video surveillance cameras. And there are six of them throughout the layout. So when the operators get on board their train, they're given a card with their paperwork that um, describes what their power assignment is. So on the top is the consist number that they put into their Digitrax throttle. It talks about which engines are in their consist and which, which functions uh, are available and the keys that are assigned to those sound functions. It also lists the horsepower and the total length. This is important because some trains require helper service if they're under a certain horsepower based on the tonnage that's listed on their manifest. So they need to know what their horsepower is, and if the dispatcher contacts them, they need to know what the length of their power is in addition to the length of their train. Um, so the dispatcher knows if there's going to be uh, available space at a siding for a meet, for example. So this is all pretty critical information that the crews need to know. When the operators build a train, they pull the cars that's listed on their manifest uh, from these tracks and put them on the front track here, for example and they build the entire train on this front track. Now, if the cars require a load, for example, this uh, requires a coal load, they'll pull it from uh, this rack, which includes all of our loads, lumber, coal, scrap, and so forth. They'll drop it in the car, and they'll build the entire train on this front track. When a train arrives, they'll pull the load out of the car, if it's a load, and put it back into the rack. In the traffic center, the total length is about 35 feet, and the staging tracks are about 25 feet each. And that accommodates uh, the maximum train length of about 25 feet on the layout. So the UP has trackage rights on the BNSF Fall River Division. So this is the staging area for the Union Pacific, and all the BNSF trains are staged on this side. From the traffic center, when we send trains out, um, a lot of times they'll go to the second level because this is a mushroom, this is a multi-level layout, we need a helix to get from one level to the second. So here's an example of a, a helix that departs from staging, and it goes up from the lower level to the upper level up here where the crew change point is. And we have a total of four helixes on the layout to get from that lower level of the mushroom to the upper level. So typically, trains are in the helix for uh, a very short time, and, and one of the principles of operation is that we want to avoid as much hidden trackage as we can. So overall, in a run, an operator will have their train in a hidden trackage, such as a helix, for only about 3 or 4% of their entire run. That was part of the design of the layout. On the BNSF Fall River Division, the dispatching job is also highly sought after. We use uh, CATS, which is a program written by Rodney Black that works with uh, JMRI. And this is an example of the, the schematic or the dispatcher's panel. And the dispatcher will uh, set the routes, set the signals, and the trains will actually track as the trains move across the layout. And that's what these yellow symbols are for. We also have a separate screen that provides the dispatcher with the train lineup, details about the train, such as tonnage, length, uh, direction, departure times, all that good information, so that's necessary. But uh, again, very popular job, and um, one of the most necessary jobs, of course, to run on a CTC mainline. Okay, so this is the BNSF Fall River Division Yard. This is a division yard, meaning that there is one subdivision that goes west out of the yard, and two subdivisions that go east out of the yard. The Union Pacific also has trackage rights over the division. And from staging, the UP comes in on these back tracks, and this is where the crew would pick the train up. Um, and they're monitored again by that camera that can see the crew change point. This is where they bring the train out. So crews also report to the yard office and talk to the yard master for an assignment out of the yard. So they might pick up a local or something else that originates in the yard. We have a crew that switches this end of the yard, classifies trains, and at the other end of the yard, there's another classification crew. And there's also a hostler job that works at the engine facility attached to the yard. This is the yard master's desk, and um, they have a phone to communicate with the dispatcher in the traffic center. And uh, they also communicate with the other people working in the yard. So for example, if a train's coming in on the west end, uh, they'll use these buttons to 
announce a an arrival or a departure. And there's this amplified speaker on the other end so the crew can hear it down there. That way they're not yelling 15, 20 feet uh, during a session. So they just hit these buttons. West End, uh, got one coming in on track two. West End, set track two for an arrival. It announces that there's an, a train arrival and the yard master has selected track number two for that train to come in. So part of the responsibility for the West End operator in the yard is to run the intermodal facility. So typically during a session, we have two intermodal trains that come in and two to that depart. So their job is to, uh, from the manifest that's created, load containers or trailers, and they do that by reaching in the stack, looking at the actual number on the container or the trailer, matching it up with the manifest, and then they actually load those into the intermodal equipment. And once the train is built, we send it to the main yard, put power on it, and call the crew, and then it departs. So on the layout, there are a number of industrial switching jobs that are called off the extra board. This particular industry is called General Foods. It's at Sage. And one of the jobs, industrial switching jobs, is to use the track mobile and pull cars off the interchange that have been spotted by the BNSF. They actually weigh the car. And how we do that is there's a weigh station here, and there's a sensor on that scale. And they flip the weigh. And this actually reads out the weight, the loaded weight of the car. That information is logged and provided to the, uh, the industry general foods. And that's done before the car is spotted uh, at one of three spots. So it's an interesting job, interesting to have to use a track mobile to actually switch between the interchange track and the spots at General Foods. So also in Sage, we have an Amtrak platform and Amtrak runs on the division, uh, two trains in a 24 hour session, one that goes east and one that goes west. And there are six different locations on the layout that Amtrak uh, stops, including a Union Station at Fall River. But this is just an example of the platform where passengers would get on and off the Amtrak train. This is an example of uh, my layout design where I wanted to create more main line between actual towns or locations. So uh, there are a number of uh, locations on the layout where we have a long main line run. So coming from Sage, where we were just at the uh, General Foods complex, uh, over Fall River, and uh, continuing westbound on the layout, um, this length between Sage and Winston on the second level is probably over 100 feet. And part of that travel is going into a helix to get to the second level. And so as we come to the helix, this benchwork is actually narrow, very narrow, because this is the lower level of the helix that's exposed so that the operator can view their train. Um, this is actually the lower level of the helix um, going upgrade to the second level. We've come up the grade from Sage, and now we're in an area called Winston. This is one of the most uh, busy areas on the layout because several trains meet up here. And there's also some switching that's done. And we also have a Y that's used by a fire train. We run when there's high fire danger in the mountains in Colorado. And if it's snowing the day of a session, we run a plow train. And that also turns up here and goes back down the grade. As we leave Winston, we're actually heading down grade to get to the lower level of the mushroom. As we head down grade in this particular area, um, this is a large uh, bridge that I built several years ago. And it was uh, scratch built out of uh, styrene for the abutments. The bridge girders are from Exact Rail. The uh, towers are microengineering. And behind the girders is just one continuous piece of aluminum channel to give the bridge some integrity and some strength. At this particular location, we have a defect detector. And this counts actual axles and looks for hot boxes and shifted loads. So if there's an issue, an alert will go off on the dispatcher's CCTV panel and the crew will be alerted um, from a speaker that's just around the corner. 
And if there is a hot box, for example, in some cases they might have to set the car out or swap cars at the next location on either side of this detector, which is a fun operating element. We have a total of three of these on the layout at various locations. So it adds a lot of interest for the operators. BNSF Railway, milepost 23.7. No defects. Repeat, no defects. Total axle count, 6-6. Six, six. Train speed, 1-8 miles per hour. Temperature, 6-8. Detector out. Okay, as we continue downgrade, this is on the upper level is called uh, West Overlook. And this is the continuous grade to get down to the first level. Um, and on the main line here is the Montana Rail Link. This is where the local interchanges a few cars during a session. Um, and the operator also has to make sure the crossing is protected by activating the fusees. On the lower level is the Crater Branch Line. This is a job that's very popular during the session, uh, first or second pick typically. And it's switching off the main line, um, industrial switching um, goes both directions from the main yard here. Uh, but a very popular job, again, is the uh, Crater Branch job. Okay, so we're continuing to head downgrade. Uh, because we don't have a helix, this is a constant grade from the upper level to the lower level. So as we come from overlooked Kimber, we do have a loop. And this is the ruling grade on the layout, which is 1.67%. So it's visible ruling grade, uh, again, just to get down to that first level without using a helix. This area is called uh, Kimber. It's one of the more popular jobs as well on the layout. And uh, this is where we're actually down to the lower level of the mushroom again. Um, the Union Pacific uh, comes on and off the layout here. This goes back to the staging area, traffic center. Um, this is also where the uh, branch line starts uh, that we just viewed, the crater branch. So we have a yard office. Uh, power is stored here for trains that terminate and originate here. There's some industry that's switched by this job. And this area is called West Kimber, and this is where the main line goes from single track to double track uh, main. There's a small yard that's used to sort cars and put trains together. There's a local that originates out of here. And this is also the helper base for uh, the grade going up. Certain trains that are low on horsepower and have certain tonnage require helpers, and that's listed or identified in their manifest. So if helpers are required, they call the dispatcher who calls a crew, and these two helper units uh, are put on the rear of the train and they shove up the grade uh, when it's necessary. Okay, so continuing west along the double track main line between Kimber and Ardmore is um, this cement um, facility. And this is a, an unfinished portion of the layout. About, um, I'd say roughly 70, 75% of the layout is scenic, but there are a number of areas that are not scenic. And in those areas, uh, I use uh, mock-ups. So this is a mock-up made of foam core board and some models that are stand-in until I can uh, figure out exactly how I want to model this particular industry. So it works well for operators, gives them a feeling of a, a place, and it works well in terms of uh, you know supporting the operations goals of the layout. So uh, this will be finished eventually. I'm just not exactly sure um, what I want to model in here and how I want to do it. But in the interim, a uh, mock-up worked great. Okay, so this area is called Ardmore, and this is on the double track main line. And part of the design here was to have a double crossover. Um, and as you may recall, we started in Fall River Yard, which is just across the aisle. But this section here is just strictly double track main line. And this crossover is controlled by the dispatcher, of course, because it's on CTC. But if the operator needed to operate these switches or turnouts in manual or hand, they use a key inserted in the fascia, unlock the actual lock, and then push the button to activate the, uh, the crossovers. 
Typically they're locked, so the operator can't do that unless they have just authority from the dispatcher to do that. Um, but they do have a key uh, to unlock any control point on the layout to, to use the turnout or the switch in manual. This area is called Black Butte Junction. Um, this is where we come up from the first level to the second level. And it's the entrance to the Black Butte Mine, and the main line is in the back. So we have uh, three arrival tracks at the mine and one departure track. Um, and is, this is where empties would come in and park until they get loaded, and loaded coal trains will depart on this front track, which is the departure track. This end of the uh, arrival departure tracks, we have two trains waiting to load. And the documentation is here manifest and the information about the consists. So the operator will align the uh, arrival tracks to the load track and they actually load, come underneath the silos and will load coal. And how we do that is we have uh, coal loads that are boxed up for the, each individual coal train and the operator just simply takes the load and drops it into the car as we're loading. So the crews also have a responsibility to check empty coal cars for trespassers before we load coal. So the mine has defined a policy. The legal department has required us to actually check the cars using a surveillance system. So as the coal cars and the train pass under here, we have to observe to make sure that there are no trespassers. And if there are, there's a process to notify the BNSF police and remove the trespasser. Okay, so this area is called uh, Richland, and it's the uh, crew change point coming from the subdivision that we just toured uh, and into the traffic center. So this train here is ready to depart the traffic center. Um, a crew, an operator would pick the train up here, contact the dispatcher, and let them know that we're ready to depart. Um, this also is an industrial area. We have some industry and some um, industry in the back here. This is a small branch that wraps around, and the local originates at Kimber, and works this, turns, and goes back down to Kimber. So this is the Kappa Grains uh, facility. It's located on the Horton subdivision of the BNSF Fall River Division. And um, this was a structure that was built by a friend of mine who built the kits from Walther's Kits and did some kit bashing. And we put it together on the layout itself. And in the process, we installed close to 100 LEDs uh, between the structure and the, uh, and the scene. So LEDs really help the uh, effect uh, during a, a night operating session. We do operate at night. And in fact, everywhere on the layout that has finished scenery is uh, lit for night operations. So we do also have blue LEDs in the lighting above the layout to provide that nighttime effect, even though operators still have to use their lantern to you know, read car numbers and see where they're going and so forth. But night operations really just provides a, a great environment and, a, and it's just a lot of fun for everybody. So in order to facilitate operations uh, for such a large layout, we do have a number of throttles that the operators utilize as well as two-way radios. We use two-way radios for the road crews talking to the dispatcher. So all the operators have to have both a radio and a throttle. So we have a total of 18 throttles because we typically have between 18 and 22 operators. So because it's a large layout, um, we do require 22, we have 20, 22 positions. And typically I like to hold uh, one or two of those for new operators. Uh, I usually get asked by uh, people wanting to learn about operations or wanting to operate here um, I get asked quite often if they can participate in a session, so I typically hold one or two of those uh, slots. And that's just one of the benefits of having a large layout. 
Um, I know large layouts can be perceived as um, you know, requiring a lot of maintenance and a lot of resources, um, and that's okay. That's why it's not great for everybody or the best solution for everybody. But for me, it works out great. I've got the resources necessary, the uh, support with uh, great helpers, um, the skills to manage large projects and people, and it just seems to work out very well for me. The maintenance is uh, minimal at most because I took the time to properly construct the layout, design it, construct it properly, so we don't have a lot of issues that require ongoing maintenance. But it does work well. Uh, I'm very satisfied with having a large layout, and um, I would encourage anybody, if that's your desire, to at least try it. If it becomes too much, then, um, then at least you know. But uh, large layouts are great. They're not for everybody, I understand, but uh, they work out great uh, in most cases for the people that have the resources and the skills. Some people have asked me what I would do differently with the layout, and my answer is that uh, my answer is nothing. Um, I what I've chosen to do differently, I've done at the time when I've asked myself that question. And um, so I'm not afraid to make changes on the layout when it's necessary. Um, and this is a great example of that. This particular area in the original plan, the fascia came all the way down. And I always felt that this area was a wasted space when it was just fascia, it was just only bench work. So I, one of my goals uh, later was to build an industrial switching park. It was kind of independent shelf layout, and it's fed by staging, uh, but this provided a great opportunity for just to knock this fascia out and add this lower level with just a bunch of industrial switching. And it's a really great, um, fun position. You get to sit down while you're working and switching, um, and it's just a, been a great joy, but it's one of those decisions that I've, I made at the time, and I'm glad I did it instead of dwelling on you know, not doing it at all or doing it later. So I'm a firm believer in if you have a desire to do something or make a change, get right into it and just do it. All right, well, thank you for visiting the BNSF Fall River Division. It was certainly my pleasure to share it with everybody. I hope you found uh, some inspiration or gathered some ideas about your own railroad. Um, for further information or if you have any questions, you can go to visit my webpage at bnsfrr.net. Uh, links to my social media and some other videos are also uh, on my webpage. So thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed the trip. And this defects, detects, cut, let's start over. Defe defects? It detects. It defects, okay. detects. And the detector uh, defect detects. <laughs> Blooper reel. Yeah. <laughs>